It's one thing to know this. It's one thing for even to have it, our heads educated with this truth. But it needs to become something that is real to us in our day-to-day -day living. And so that's why he says what he does in verse 15. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Praise God. It's good to have somebody who's praying for you, isn't it? This is not incidental to this, by the way. I mean, Paul felt the need not just to communicate information here. There was a going to God for people. And this is something that needs to be a part of this equation. We don't just need to say, well, you got, it. You got everything you need in Jesus. Go for it. We need to be praying and say, God, help, strengthen. Cause your spirit to flow to the dry places in people's lives. Set them free. Make this truth that you have given to us in the gospel. Make it real. Boy, I am a, I'm a candidate for this. I need a lot more of what he is going to be talking about in this passage to become more real in my life. I think there's one or two of you here that could possibly profit from this. And so he says, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Now, what are the content of his prayers? I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. There's a lot in that. You want to know something about spiritual things? There's all kinds of ideas about where that knowledge comes from. And a lot of people think that if you can just get the right set of principles... And you can study this book diligently. You can ascertain truth. It ain't so. There's nobody on this planet that that's, that's that smart. And you've got all kinds of theological systems out there that are built because men make rules on how to understand this book. And then they go interpret it and they, give you their, they deliver their conclusions. Jesus spoke to a group of the religious people one day. And you said, he said, you, you study the scriptures. You diligently study the scriptures. And he says, the reason you do it is because you think you're going to have eternal life. You think it's in there some way, if you can just dig it out. But you won't, you, the, the scriptures actually testify about me, but you won't come to me. There is a spiritual content to truth. In fact, truth is really a person. Yes. Ultimately, truth is a person. Now, we find that person expressed in words, but the purpose of the words is to lead us to the person. And not only that, you cannot understand this book apart from the author. We have got to have something that goes beyond human understanding and human ability. This world is full of people who will study this book and don't have a clue. You know, Paul spoke about many of his fellow Israelites and he spoke about their blindness. And he said there was a veil. But where did he say that veil was? It was on the heart. See, that's where this has got to get. God is seeking to so reveal himself, not just to our heads, so that we can have the right doctrines and ideas. He, he is, he is re, he's working a lot deeper than that to reveal himself to our hearts because it's out of the heart. The proverb says it's in the heart, the, out of the heart of man is where the issues of life come from. This is what determines what you and I do on a day-to-day -day basis. We can know stuff here, but our heart is one that just determines which way we go. And so to what degree, to whatever degree, these things are not real down in here, they're not going to be effective in our lives. And I sense in me and I sense in others, God is wanting to make what he has done real. There's nothing lacking in what he has done. But yet we go on and on and on and on with so many things in our lives unchanged, untouched by the truths of the gospel. And I just pray, this, this is the burden of Paul's heart. He, he, wants, he wants God's spirit to so work that we will have wisdom. We, we will understand things. I mean, we will understand not just the, uh, the what of things, but the why and the how of things. How to relate to him, how to seek him, the fact that our life is connected to a person, 
not just the walking, walking in a religion. And notice what the, the purpose of this revel, wisdom and revelation is, so is what? So you can know stuff. So that you can have the proper theological education. You can uphold the faith delivered to our fathers, and by that they mean a set of doctrines. All of that is utterly and completely vain if it does not lead us into a relationship with Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Paul's concern is not that they just get this, all this stuff in their heads, but they know the person. Because he, in his life is what transforms. His life is the only hope that you and I have. Praise God. And so, he prays that God, that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Well, that's interesting. He doesn't say so that you'll know him, does he? He's talking to people who know him, knows, knows the Lord. They know the Lord. But here's the, here's the deal. We don't know him well enough. There is a process. There is a walking with him through life in which we get to know him better. And tomorrow it's a little better. And after that it's a little better. That's God's plan and that's God's purpose for salvation. Our sins have been blotted out, but I need to be saved as an ongoing process. I need to experience the transformation. What is God after? Is just blot my sins, take me to heaven one day? No. His purpose is to make me like his son. There is a change that needs to happen in my heart and in my life. And, and I can't do it. I can't do it. He knows we can't. You know, the sooner we, under, we recognize, he knows how helpless you are. You know, we sang the song, Lord, you know how weak I am. Thank God he's not, as I said before many times, he's not counting on us. He's not counting on my faithfulness. He's not counting on my will. He's not counting on, on anything. It's in me. But, oh, he has everything. He has the strength of will. He has the courage. He has the faith that I need. He has all that I need. In his life, and just like the vine that just or the branches that draw just simply draw life from the vine, that's what God is seeking to work out in us. And he goes on and he says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart. Now see, this is where it gets right down to it. Paul, Paul could communicate in a few sentences the doctrines involved in what he's trying to say. But he understands that that's not enough. 